Hello and welcome guys. So I'm starting a new project playlist. In this project playlist, we are going to develop a sentiment analysis classifier. And uh, this project is a good way to get started with NLP. So if you want to learn the foundational concepts of NLP, then using this project, it's a best way to get started. So the data set here we are using is the IMDB movie review data set. So let me go to the Kaggle. This is a link of the data set. I will provide this link in the description. So this is an IMDB data set of 50k movie reviews. So in this CSV, we have uh, one review column and second one is uh, sentiment. So we have to use this data set to uh, train our model and develop such a system which can classify uh, the text, whether that, that text has positive sentiment or negative sentiment. Okay, so this is the aim of this project. So in this video, we are going to see this full project at high level and later in the upcoming video, we will develop this uh, project step by step. Okay, so in this project series, we are going to build two different model. In version one, I will use something and in version two, I will try to use some other techniques. And uh, in test model, we are going to see the comparison of uh, whatever we developed using version one and whatever we are going to develop using version two. So we'll compare the, both model and then we will come to some conclusion that which will be the best for this. So I'm trying to cover almost all the foundational concepts of NLP using this project playlist. So that's why I'm going to develop uh, all the possible solution which we can use to perform any text analysis. So let me quickly give a overview of this project. So what we are going to perform here. So first uh, here, uh, let let me show you the version one so here i'm um, first i'm going to import all the required libraries and um, then here i have loaded the data set and then here first we'll understand the two fundamental concepts uh, of nlp so this these are uh, these concepts are required for text pre-processing so first one is stemming and second one is lemmatization so these things we are going to see in detail in the upcoming videos after learning these concepts, we are going to combine these concepts to develop our clean text function, which we are going to use on our data set to perform text cleaning because uh, this data set, whatever we have here, it is not cleaned. And uh, if we feed this information directly to our machine learning model, then uh, definitely we will suffer with the accuracy. So first we have to perform some cleaning. If you see here, they are using this HTML tag, this brick HTML tag they are using. So that doesn't mean anything because in sentiment, we don't require these information. So we are going to perform some pre-processing on the text so that we can only feed the important information to our model so that model can learn the important feature from the text. All these things I will explain in detail in my upcoming videos. So this is that and after that we are also some uh, we are doing computation of number of words in the text. So why I am doing this I will explain you later and after that we are splitting our data set and then here we are doing text vectorization. Why we are doing this because uh, any machine learning deep learning model will uh, only accept data in the in numerical format. So we have to convert our text data in uh, numbers that is vectors. We are converting our text in vector. So that is uh, this text vectorization. So this thing also we'll discuss in detail. And then I'm building vocabulary. And uh, uh, these are some uh, deep diving we are doing on this text vectorizer. So this type of uh, vectors we will get for each text and uh, after that uh, we are going to build a lstm model so by using this project you are going to learn about uh, lstm model if you are following my videos then we already developed too much uh, solution using convolutional neural network and now we are going to explore lstm neural networks so this is also a new thing which you are going to learn in this project playlist so what is LSTM and all I will explain you in detail in the upcoming videos and uh, after that I am uh, doing the model training using my training set. So after 10 epochs I am getting here training accuracy as 94.8% and validation accuracy as 87.8% and uh, I am saving this model 
and this is the accuracy visualization I am doing and here I am testing this model on some random text. So here I have taken one query like here the movie was cool the animation and graphics were out of this world I would recommend this movie. So this uh, text I have taken and um, model is saying that it is a positive sentiment with 84.13% of score. And here I set the threshold of 0.5. So I'm saying that if it is gr greater than 0.5, then consider it as a positive sentiment. And if it is less than 0.5, then consider it as negative sentiment. Because here we are using uh, a sigmoid function. So that's why we have to, to use this threshold here. And second query I've taken here is this one. The movie was good in first half, but second half is washed. So I hate it. So it's classifying it to a negative sentiment with the score of this one, which is less than 0.5. So it's saying that it is negative sentiment, which is good. And after that, I'm doing model evaluation by computing precision recall F1 score and confusion matrix. So this is that. So after this, I'm getting this confusion matrix and this is the classification report of this version one. Okay, so after this version, we have version two also. So in version two, I tried to improve the model accuracy, like here, what, whatever we are getting and what is whatever is the model capability, I, I tried to improve it. So that's why I developed this version two for you. And in version two, you will learn some advanced concepts which you can use in this project to make your model more better. So in this uh, version two, this part is same like loading data set and text pre-processing part. This is similar to version one, but here we are going to, to uh, perform tokenization on the sentences, like whatever sentences we got from here, we are going to tokenize it. So what is this tokenization and all we'll discuss in detail. And here we are going to use continuous bag of word embedding techniques. So like in version one, we are not using any embedding technique. We are relying on uh, first we did text vectorization. And after that, uh, we have uh, randomly initialized some embedding matrix and we are uh, training that embedding matrix along with our uh, neural network. OK, so if you notice here that uh, here we are not building any embedding matrix. We are just randomly initializing that embedding matrix and we are training it with our neural network. OK, but here we are uh, separately training and developing embedding matrix. What is this embedding matrix and all we will discuss in detail. So just for the idea, I would like to give you that uh, we are building separate embedding matrix. So embedding matrix is a vector representation. So it's it is a correct way of representing any word in the vector space vector space what is vector space and all we'll discuss in the upcoming videos okay so you can consider it as it is an efficient way to convert your word in uh, numbers so that's why we are separately training it and developing that uh, numbers that correct number for that word so that is what we are doing here and one more thing here we are training and developing this word to vec model so this is a model which will take word as input and it will give you the vector of that word. That is only the capability of this word to work model. OK, so after that, we are splitting this data into training set and test set. And then we are doing this text vectorization same as whatever we did in uh, there. And after that, we are building the vocabularies. So I am printing the first 50 vocabulary here. So this is, these are the vocabulary and uh, I'm building my vectorized layer also. And uh, if I show you the power of that word to vec, so if you write good, then you can you will be able to see the vector representation of that good. OK, so this is a vector representation of that good. OK, so we are using this word to vec model and we are using this word to vec model to to compute my embedding matrix. OK, so I am computing here my embedding matrix and instead of here we are randomly initializing this embedding matrix in version one. Here we are initializing this entire embedding pipeline using word to vec embedding. OK, so this is what we are doing here. Here we are not going to train this part because we already did a separate training for that. And uh, I have initialized it here in my embedding layer. And then I'm going to use this embedding layer directly here. And here we are going to use bi-directional LSTM instead of only LSTM. So this is also a 
powerful LSTM as compared to single directional LSTM. So what is bidirectional LSTM? Again, we are going to discuss in detail in the upcoming videos. And uh, then I'm training this model. And after training, I'm getting here 89.41% of validation accuracy. Okay. And um, these are the visualization of accuracy and loss. And I have tested the same query by using this model. So for this, like the movie was good in first half, but second half is was so I hate it. So by seeing this text, user is trying to say that I'm not happy with the movie. I hate the movie. I am hating it. Okay. So this is what user is trying to say. So model is capturing it and giving very less score close to zero. So it's giving 0 0.008. Okay. If you notice the version one score. So there we are getting much higher score. Like here we are getting 0 0.01. But here model is understanding it more better and it's giving very less score. It's understanding that user is uh, hating it and user is saying that it is very bad. Okay. So it's giving the score of sentiment very less. Okay. And I tried some other examples like amazing movies. So I'm getting 0 0.6 and positive sentiment. And after that same I did here also I computed precision recall F1 score and confusion matrix and this is what we are getting here. And so this is all about version 2. So in version 2 you are going to learn some uh, slight uh, advanced concept and in test model we are going to do head to head comparison of model 1 model 2 on some of the some queries like this. Like I was left on the edge of my seat throughout. I hated the first half yet the ending made it worth watching. So these are some examples I have taken and also I have taken sarcasms like well that was a disaster wrapped in fancy cinematography. So these are some examples and I'm testing here. So what is the response I'm getting we'll discuss in detail in the upcoming videos. So by seeing this response um, you will be able to understand that why model one is performing better and uh, so by seeing the comparison you will be able to know that Okay, so model two is performing better, but why it's performing better? These are the things which I have written here and I will explain you. But uh, after completing this part one and part two, only then you can understand this thing which I have written here. Okay, so this is all about this uh, project playlist. So if I summarize this entire discussion, then you are going to learn lots of thing here. Okay first you are going to start with text basic text processing why it's needed why we can't directly feed this information there so this thing also you will get clarity after understanding this basic text processing things and after that why i'm doing here text vectorization this already you know that we similarly we did in uh, uh, our plant disease and other image recognition playlist also there also we converted those images into vector form why because machine learning deep learning model will understand numbers it will not understand images it will not understand uh, text okay so that's why vectorization is very important concept so how we are using this uh, and what is this text vectorization class of tensorflow what it do what is this vocab size max length this entire thing we will discuss in detail okay and why we are building this vocabulary what is the use of this vocabularies so this thing and why we are using lstm here why we can't use a convolutional neural network if you are following my videos then you know that we develop a bunch of projects on convolutional neural network now with this project you are going to learn one more neural network which is lstm neural network and also some advanced lstm neural network like bi-directional lstm neural network so these things also we are going to discuss in this project series in detail and after completing this part of project we will see the advanced version of this model which is in version 2 and then we'll compare both in testmodel.ipynb file okay so this is all about this video i hope you get idea that uh, what we are going to perform in this entire project series okay so that's all for this video we will meet in next video and in next video we'll start building our project step by step okay so thank you guys thanks a lot for watching this video yeah.